<laughs> oh boy. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Brocco Fast, another car review today. And as you can see, we have something extremely special here. This is the 1990 Nissan Pulsar GTI-R. And you're going, what? GTI what? I've never heard of this car. The Pulsar that I'm thinking is this ugly little boxy thing that Nissan made. Well, you're probably right. Well, in Japan, the Pulsar was something else. The Pulsar had a lot of different variations, and this is the GTI-R. And before we get into that, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, join the team, and if you're joining us again and you're already part of the team, welcome back. I'm glad to have you. I am so excited. I know I get excited on these videos when I get to test drive these cars because I love cars, and I love to go fast, obviously. Um, but this one is special. This is, this is awesome. This is right from Japan. This is a car that I've known about um, since I built my first car 20 years ago. Um, I built a 1992 Nissan Sentra and I took the motor out of one of these and put it in my car and it made around 330 horsepower uh, with a bunch of mods that I had done to it. It was an amazing car and ever since I, I laid hands on that motor, I knew that I wanted one of these one day. So we're gonna tell you a lot about this car and why it's so special and why it's so cool. So this, is the, the Nissan Pulsar, GTI-R. It was made from 1990 to 1994. It was actually made to compete in the World Rally Championship. Uh, if you remember Nissan back in the 90s, they loved racing. It didn't no matter what kind of racing, Nissan was gonna get in it, they're gonna put a lot of money in it, and they, you know, we're gonna make special cars from it. That's why we have the cars that we do from Nissan because of their motorsports heritage. Nissan, if you're listening, get back to it, because you're boring me. Um, but um, this car was, was made for the World Rally Championship. What the World Rally Championship said was that, hey, Nissan, if you want to do this, you have to use a car that you already make um, to compete. Nissan said, okay, we'll do that. This is where this car was born. So it's actually born as a rally car and was made for rallying. So what does that mean, everybody? It's all-wheel drive. It is all-wheel drive all the time, and it's turbocharged. So it has the SR20 DET, uh, motor and in the most powerful form making 227 horsepower back in 1990. Now that came with individual throttle bodies, bigger injectors, bigger turbos, sodium filled valves, exhaust valves. This motor was a special motor for the SR20 DE, SR20 DET family and uh, it got in this car and only this car. So it is a very special little hot hatch. There wasn't a ton of them made. Um, I think in 1990, they made the most of them. It was 15,000 units, but that was because they had to make so many for the World Rally Championship. And as the years went on, they, they uh, you know, trickled down those numbers. Um, so it is, it's just a really, really cool car. And you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, this thing has 227 horsepower. It's all wheel drive from factory. It only weighs like 2,700 pounds, which is pretty light. And if, if that doesn't work for you, put these numbers in perspective. It could run a 13.5 in the quarter mile in 1990. Now a same Mustang GT in 1990 was running a 14.8, 14.9, maybe a 15 second with a bad driver. Think about that. This little hot hatch from Japan would crush the muscle cars that we had here in the United States in the 1990s. I mean, that is just astronomical. It's so cool. It's such a neat little car. And the coolest part about this one, it's mine. A 20 year dream has realized this one is mine. This is my little baby. And uh, we're gonna be doing more videos of this car as I go and as we mod it and as we play with this car. Uh, and I'm so excited. So let's get into the review. Let's see this car and let's show you a little bit more about it. So let's start with the front of this car, right? This has the factory Nissan option skid plate, World Rally Championship, remember that. You gotta remember, it's a rally car. So it's got a full bumper skid plate for jumping them jumps, you know, going through the dunes. Um, and as you can see here, mine has a front mount intercooler. These actually came with top mount intercoolers. That's why you see this huge, aggressive um, intercooler intake, we'll call it. And the greatest thing is, Nissan knew Air's gonna be going in, it's gotta come out somewhere. So they put these vents on both sides. This is all factory. This is how cool this car is. And as you can see here, the opening is massive. So the Nissan knew, okay, people are gonna put a front mount intercooler on it. They just, they just kinda knew it and gave you that option for it. It's got a big radiator from factory. 
Um, they did a really good job with that. I love the grill. It doesn't say Nissan. This is the Pulsar symbol. So it has the Pulsar symbol right here, these giant louvers. I mean, this in your rear view mirror is coming at you. Now imagine this at 100 miles per hour in the dirt, look out. Now we move on to the side of the car, right? It's a pretty simple car. Remember, this is the 1990s. Boxy was in, um, you know, Nissan took this bumper piece here, kind of molded these, these flares. These are, these are almost like flares the, that everybody's doing now, but they came from factory from Nissan. And they did a good job just having this line come in here. Now the GTIR is getting these side skirts, um, the little bit of the smaller mirrors here. And uh, you know, it's just a hatchback. There's not much you can say really about it. And they finish it off with this huge spoiler. Um, but it's one of those things, the car's not for everybody. I think it looks awesome. I was always into these 90s Japanese cars. I loved uh, hatchbacks in general. And if, if, if you like hatchbacks, there's nothing you can't say about this. Now this car's finished off with the uh, 16 inch uh, OZ wheels. It's also got Willwood six pot calipers, big brakes, baby, and uh, Toyo R888Rs, and they are sticky. Um, so it's got a lot of good parts on it already. I got very lucky with this car, but this is what um, this car is, is rocking right now. Normally it had uh, the same type of front brakes as say like a B13 Sentra or an NX. Um, they were pretty small. To be honest, I think they were a little too small for this car from factory. Boom, so most people upgrade these, and this is the six pot Willwood uh, kit. Um, clear markers here on the sides, and uh, it's, just a, it's just a good looking little hot hatch. You know, it's, it's somewhat aggressive. And as we make ourselves around the car to the rear of the car, you can see here the giant rally inspired wing. Uh, this is very Japanese, this black piece here, and you can see it's made for a longer plate here. Uh, the Pulsar, the GTIR badging, um, and they finished, remember the side piece going through here? It's all right here. They love to use a little bit of that black plastic, I think, um, in Japan. And uh, the car's finished off with a three inch exhaust. I think this is a uh, three and a half inch tip. Um, it, this car has a three, three inch exhaust, three inch downpipe all the way through. Uh, you got your little wiper blade there. <laughs> so it is very, it's very hot hatch. It's very rally inspired. Um, and it's, it's a really neat car. So, you know, there's not a lot of styling cues that you're gonna find, like say on the Corvette um, or the, the Shelby or the, the newer cars today that they really put a lot of effort into there. Um, you know, back in the 90s, they made a cool body, put some body kit on it and threw a real, real big motor in something or a fast motor and let the tuners go to work. And with this car having 227 horsepower, uh, mine's roughly around 300. So it's gonna, it's gonna scoot on us. engine bay. Let's talk about that. As you can see, the, the top mount is gone. Uh, we've got the uh, nice intercooler piping here, cold air intake, all the way to a Garrett GT30 turbo. Now factory was going to be a T28 Garrett turbo. Uh, this car's rocking 1000 cc injectors. We have our strut bar there. Um, so it's a real pretty SR20 DET. So let's talk interior. Hold on, something's wrong. Okay, that's better. I knew something was wrong here. Yes, this car is right-hand drive. That means the steering wheel is on the right-hand drive, right hand, yeah, I got it. Uh, but as you can see, I don't know if you noticed when I got in the car, it's really hard. I've got long legs. To get in and out of this car, these seats sit up so high. Remember, the average height, I think in Japan is like five foot five, so, it's a lot easier to get in. The seats, the seats, a lot of headroom, but the seats are tall, cushy. I feel like I sit too high up. I wanna sit about two inches lower, just cause I'm a little bit taller. But the steering wheel, the famed GTIR, three spoke steering wheel, phenomenal. Once you're in it, it's interesting cause the steering wheel's up like this, not straight towards you. 
and uh, it's just an interesting type of configuration. I'm comfortable, plenty of room. The shifter is super tall because again, you're sitting in these big plushy seats, not the race seats, right? So other than that, I mean, everything's there. We're so used to a dead pedal on the right for your foot, there isn't one. So you just have to put your foot down when you're on the gas and there's barely any room for your foot with the clutch. But other than that, it's pretty cool. It's pretty old school Nissan JDM. I mean, you could take a look here. We got the GTIR steering wheel. Bam, you got your gauges here. And right down there, you can see your, your boost gauge, oil pressure. The seats were redone. And there's your back seat. So it's a pretty neat little car. The interior reminds me very much of, of the old B13 Centras. It's very close, uh, only right-hand drive. And of course, you know, I always try to find out where am I gonna put my wallet and phone. Wallet goes there, it's perfect, and my phone fits in this little side part pretty awesomely. So, boom, big check for the Pulsar. Oh, and I definitely gotta show you one of the coolest parts, and it's like it's a fame to claim. Bam, what do you got in here? Oh, it's rainy? Yeah, that's a Nissan, Nissan umbrella factory. There it goes, locked and loaded. What? Oh, hot, hot, hot. All right. <laughs> As you notice. All right, now for the fun part. We did the review of the outside, the exterior. We got to see about the car. Woo, it's hot out here. Um, but now let's go see what it's like to drive this car. You know, the fun part. And as you can see, the shifter is <laughs> on the wrong side. Oh wait, the steering wheel too? Yeah, the steering wheel is on the wrong side. So you'll get used to that. It took me a minute when uh, when I first got in the car to really understand, like I went to put the, st the seat belt on like this and it takes you a minute and it's, it's kind of fun. So we'll start off, here we go. <laughs> Old school, JDM, all day long. Boo! <laughs> and I hope you're hearing the noises come through because it's fantastic. So driving this thing, to be honest, the re review should be somewhat simple because truthfully, you drive on the right-hand side of the road, which takes a little bit to get used to uh, just because you're, you're always used to kind of, I don't know, it's hard to describe come over to the middle a little bit but luckily this car is so small that you just don't get a lot of the like the lane changing on some of the bigger Japanese cars um, I will say <laughs> it is a little bit to get used to but once you're used to it it's it's really fun I would say that the craziest part about the the right hand drive um, you know everything on the shifter side it's the same first is over here just like it would be you know at home um, but the windshield wiper part is over here where our are on the left hand side where our turn signal is so for the first couple days driving this car i'm flipping the windshield wipers on every two seconds it was really really annoying now i actually have to think about it and go oh okay now i get it that's how you do it <laughs> so it is pretty uh interesting um the car remember is 30 years old so all those fun creature comforts that we're used to it's not in here don't buy one and don't buy an old Japanese car if you're expecting like the best of the best interior functions. In this car, it was built for a purpose. So what did you get? You got a radio, air conditioning. That was it. There was no, there's no seat heaters. There's no seat cooler offers. There's no anything, but you did get an umbrella, which come on, today's standards, that's freaking cool. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm enjoying this for a second. <laughs> the noises it makes, the pops, the bangs, the... That right there. That That is just... Oh man, I've gotten chills. It's just... If you know, you know. And if it's something... I've been watching this type of stuff for 
or 25 years, I mean, I knew Skylines before Skylines were a thing in Fast and the Furious and before Gran Turismo, I had them on my wall. It's just, this is this is a big part of who I am and why I, I love cars. And to have one is just so cool. And we'll talk, let's talk about the handling, right? So the handling from factory, it's, it's set up a little weird. It has really giant sway bars. Um, it's got okay rear sway bars, but I think with the R8 ARs, it's a little squishy because they are taller, right? It's a, and it, it, it takes a minute for it to like move. It, you have to set the car. Um, it's not like some of these modern cars with the Magnaride suspension, like the Shelby and the Corvette, where you turn in and it immediately computers dance and boom, it's stiff. The car, the car is, it takes a minute for it to get going. And now remember the car's 30 years old. That could be a bushings thing. Um, but with that being said, does it handle good? Is it fun to drive? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to whip this thing in a corner. Um, I actually lifted the, the rear wheel the other day, turning it in. So it's stiff. Um, but you know, from factory, they were, they pushed a little bit. And I just wonder if did Nissan do that because the car was meant to, to rally and you're supposed to pitch it into a corner and get the, the rear end to slide out and power on. Uh, maybe that's why and, and maybe that's what people don't understand because not a lot of these are really used for rally these days because They're so hard to get parts for not a lot of people track them Which I really want to track this but knowing how hard it is to find a part I'd hate for the car to be down for six months seven months um, You know and Nissan's bringing back the heritage program, which is killer um, But it's mostly geared toward GTRs and hopefully that we'll get a couple things too, but second gear roll <laughs> oh she's a gem she's a gem this little girl but as you can see the engine's strong it pulls hard uh that garrett turbo with this car in the t28 and i know this from my uh my the car that i had built um instant spool with that t28 you got i mean just torque right away power right away with the turbo in this car it takes a minute to spool as you saw but once it does, you're on your way, and it is all the way to redline. I mean, the car absolutely rips. And the crazy part is, it's in kilometers, so you can't really figure that out until you use your brain. Um, and sometimes you're going too fast to use your brain, but <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun to drive. The car's got lots of torque in it, lots of power. And with the all-wheel drive, you're not worried about spinning. You're not worried about you know the, the things you would be saying a front wheel drive car or a rear wheel drive car this car literally you could pitch into a corner stand on the gas and she's either going to dance a little or she's going to stick and go and uh, a lot of these cars from factory were, were, were set up to push real hard like we talked about so once you kind of dial that out get some coilovers thicker rear sway bar this car starts to starts to dance a little bit starts to you know really really have fun and, and show itself um, so, I mean, it's a really cool car. You can hear the exhaust note. It's just, it's, it's perfect. You know, it's a three inch exhaust all the way back. And, and, you know, this is more of a review of a, of a modded one. I would guess, I guess I'd say just because it's, it's got a lot done to it and it's a lot of fun, but you know, I've driven one of these factory in stock and, and it does the same thing. It does the same smiles, just not as fast. The brakes, let's talk about the brakes. The brakes are good. Oh, okay. <laughs> the brakes are real good. Once those six piston Willwood calipers get up to temp, this thing stops. Now I will tell you that at the very beginning, when I hopped in the car, it didn't want to stop. The car hadn't been driven in a while. The brakes were cold. Had to kind of knock those, those cobwebs off of them. Um, but I've noticed the more I'm getting heat in them, the more I'm using them, they're starting to get more and more grabby. And these are more like a street, 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 track pad kind of not real you could go track them but you're really going to want to put race pads in these and uh you know it's getting it's it's stop it's starting to stop pretty awesome pretty awesome there's plenty of room in the back seat i plan on taking my son with me it's actually you know remember it's a hot hatch so there's a lot of a lot of room in this car to to be able to do things with you know you could set probably a set of four wheels and tires in the back of this thing seats fold down uh when i got the car the previous owner had a lot of spare parts for me and we fit I mean he fits so much stuff in this car you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it and there was nothing in the front seats so I mean this car really ergonomically it, it definitely 
definitely uh, could be a daily driver. Um, I can tell you I've driven this car, I probably drove it almost every day since I got it. And uh, you know, sometimes you need just a smile on your face, whether it's groceries or, you know, going to pick your kid up or, you know, just going for a cruise. And, and it really just puts a smile on my face. And you remember, 30 year old car. So if you're looking for an old JDM car, it's, it's gonna be old. You're not gonna find that perfect gem. You're not gonna find that one that is just like absolutely perfectly clean. Everything is like it's brand new, unless you pay the big bucks because you know what? They're out there, but they want six figures. That doesn't get old, by the way. It just doesn't get old. It, it really doesn't get old. Uh, but you know, as you can see, like we're, we're just turning in. You see the car sets gas is on <laughs> obviously my smile says it all right it says it all you know and, and it's one of those things that if you can find a nice one right now the market has gone up about a year ago you could find a, a, a nice pulsar gti r for about 12k 13k a rough one for eight or nine now we're looking at 16 17k for a, a decent one uh you're looking at 25 K for a real nice one and, and I've already seen some at 40 45 that were perfect 50 I mean and this is just in a matter of six months obviously the car market is wild right now um, but you know that's kind of where you're at if you're looking for one <laughs> but um, so if you're in the market for one and you're looking for one that's right around where you're gonna pay and but you know what they're fun as project cars too so if you just want to get one that's a little rougher Spend a little less money, you know, and, and maybe get it painted. Do the things that you want to do. Build the motor, stiffen the transfer, stiffen the uh, transmission, um, you know, and do those things. Because remember, these transmissions are a little bit of the weak point in these cars. Second and third gear has a tendency to strip, and the case with a lot of hard shifting um, will explode. And I'm not joking; like literally, will explode. Uh, so they they made some uh, some billet kind of case strengtheners. I have one on this car to really help keep the transmission together, uh, but you gotta, gotta be careful. Can't really go over, you know, 400 horsepower in these uh, without really getting scared that you're gonna break a transmission. And there's some guys out there that haven't broke one, some guys out there that have. Uh, just really depends on how well you take care of the car and do you shift hard, do you drag race it? So those are the little things you're gonna have to worry about when you get one of these cars. And remember, parts are really hard to find. Uh, but that's kind of fun when you own one of these cars because I like the hunt. So I, yeah, I love trying to find things, especially find things that you can't find or that are hard to find. So it's, it's kind of a really cool thing. Uh, but again, it's a really neat car. The Pulsar GTIR is something that's a little more rare and not a lot of people know of it. And, and you'll get a lot of looks. You'll get a lot of people asking you what that is, what is that? And just wanting to talk to you. So if you're prepared for that, this is a perfect car for you. And if, if you don't have the money for a GTR yet, but you have a, you have some money saved up and you want something different, an all-wheel drive, you don't want a Sylvia, um, you don't you know you don't want a Safira or whatnot. This is an amazing car for someone to own. It really, really, truly is because it's got so much potential and it doesn't need to have a ton of horsepower to be fun. So you know, my recommendation go find one, but that it's not for everybody. It's not, it really isn't. And if you can't handle an older car and what's gonna happen, it's gonna break on you one day. It's just, you have to deal with it. Um, go get one, go get one and have fun. Put a smile on your face. That's, that's my main part. If I could take away anything, when I buy a car, it's to put a smile on my face. If I get in it and drive it and I don't laugh and giggle like you see on this darn video, then it's not the right car for me and it's it's not something that that i want to purchase so i hope you enjoyed the video we're gonna have more content on this pulsar gtir and uh you know thanks for joining again hit the subscribe button hit the like button comment down below on what you think of the car and uh, i'd love to hear more about your build stories as well because it's just so neat to learn from everybody and the community has been great and you can join on the facebook communities as well so thanks again thanks for joining the team Rock go fast. I'll see you on the next one.